Ladies and gentlemen, I often get messages from people that really, really want to climb and rank up all the way to the diamond rank. So, in order to help everyone out, I'm going to give you the top 10 easiest things that you can do to climb to diamond right away. Speaking of climb to diamond, GameLeap.com has you covered with the most up-to-date, in-depth, advanced concept guides and VOD reviews that are sure to help you improve all the way to the diamond rank and beyond. Do yourself a favor, go check it out, and use the links down below. So, the first and biggest tip that i have for you if you really want to climb to diamond and it's combo ultimates and i know that a lot of people are going to be saying things like ultimate combos this is pretty par for the course for what everyone always says you need a combo ultimates here's the thing that a lot of people get wrong that you need to specifically do when you plan to combo ultimates with a partner i don't want you to be comboing ultimates maybe one time in a game or maybe even five times in a game you should be comboing your ultimates over and over and over over again in fact i think that you should try to combo every single time never use a ultimate by yourself if you can help it especially if your duo is someone like azari and a hanzo comboing your ultimates is guaranteed to bring tons of value as opposed to just using ultimates alone might get you some value but it often will not especially at the lower ranks when there's not the right amount of follow-up the point of an ultimate combo is that it's guaranteed to get value even without follow-up for your team because ideally one combo follows up the other just like the dragon follows up the grav. Now another big problem with comboing ultimates that a lot of players do consistently is they try to use their ultimate combo to win lost fights. Now this is definitely possible at the higher level but it requires a much larger understanding about what the enemy's counterplay measures are. So in general you should not be comboing your ultimates after multiple members of your team die. You need to be comboing your ultimate before any member of your team feeds. Do it right away right when you see the enemy. Ult them and combo them right away. Don't give any of your allies a chance chance to feed and die make sure that you get the ultimate off and you get those one to three kills in the bag and then you use your numbers advantage to win the team fight don't lose three people and then get the one to three kills with your ultimate making it an even team fight that you could still lose even after you invested this is so important combo ultimates do it right away do it as many times as possible throughout a match and you will start climbing i guarantee it now the second tip i have for you is force enemies to ult or even use their abilities now this is a big counter to that question often asked what do i do if they have defensive ults well you see especially low ranked players oftentimes they will either one hold on to their ultimate and tunnel vision it onto one thing let's say they really want to counter like a genji blade it doesn't matter what happens to them if they're tunnel visioned on that they will literally not press their q button until they see the genji blade now you could abuse this in a particular way because even if they're gonna die even if you pressure them or kill them they're still not going to invest their ultimate and if they die without using their ultimate then you're freed up so what you should do is you should try to pressure them as much as possible try to get them to use their ultimate and if that doesn't work just kill them all together because they're so tunnel visioned on countering your ultimate that they don't understand that if they just die and don't use it anyways it's still a lost team fight and then it's going to be too late anyway so pressure them kill them or target them and then bait out their ultimates and in a similar way you can bait out abilities and some abilities that you're baiting out is really important think about baiting out a diva's dm by focusing her so your zara can get an easy grab in or baiting out a mccree's flashbang so that your doomfist can go dive onto him now moving on to the third thing that you could do to instantly climb to diamond and it's clear concise comms Please stop saying, I'm low, heal me, heal me, when your allies have no idea who's talking at any given moment. You should be talking about yourself in third person. Say, McCree needs heals, or Genji needs heals. Even if that's you, it makes it a lot easier for your healer to identify, hey, this is who he is. I don't have to look up in the top corner, then cross-reference that with who's talking, and then go find you. Because by the time I jump through all those hoops, you're already dead, it's already too late. So talk about yourself in third person. The next thing that you need to stop doing altogether is stop calling enemies one when they're not one you need to try to be as accurate with your health total callings as possible say enemy 50 hp enemy one bar enemy half calling things exactly how they are is extremely important because let's take the most extreme example imagine calling an enemy one shot and your genji dashes at them right which does 50 damage but they're not actually at one shot. They're a tank at 250 HP. Now, not only can your Genji not kill that target, he dashed in based on your call and couldn't kill the target. So now he doesn't have it out and he feeds. This is why calling and calling things accurate is so important. 
Now, the next thing is make sure that you relay to your team exactly what ultimates you know that the enemies have and call if you plan to use a combo. The last thing that you want is for you to like nanoblade or something and your allies grab dragon shatter all at the same time. You definitely do not want that to happen. Now, moving on to the fourth thing that we have for you is make plays that matter. Now, what I mean by this is that sometimes there are certain strategies or characters that the enemies can play that sometimes it takes teamwork to shut them down, but that's teamwork that you just don't have at the lower ranks. The perfect example of this would be something like Bastion. In those scenarios, while you could try to rally your team to not poke damage and flank the Bastion all at the same time, in lower ranks, that type of synergy is just not going to happen. Instead, it is almost always easier for you to make a proactive play just yourself. And if you think you can't do this for your role, you 100% can, no matter what role you're playing. May can ice wall him up. Ana can sleep dart and nade him on a flank high ground. Roadhog can flank and hook him off the cart and solo kill him. There's always something you can could do and you got to realize until that strategy is shut down your entire mission is to shut down that bastion and if you can then you're going to be able to rank up and if you can't the enemy is just going to farm you but i guarantee you that a diamond plus player would do something proactive to shut this down as an additional example imagine a scenario where a may is just constantly walling off your team now if you hop the wall as hanzo and headshot her that's a way that you made a proactive play that prevents the may from walling you off anymore allowing your team opportunity your team didn't necessarily do anything but you still allow your team to overcome that through your play alone and this is exactly what i mean by making plays that matter now the next thing the fifth tip i have for you is pick the perfect duo now a lot of players suggest hard stacking four five six stacking in comp and i would not suggest this for one reason alone smurfs if you six stack with people that are legitimately that rank the problem Problem is you're gonna be going up against other six stacks and what does six stacks love better than anything else that's right getting boosted by multiple smurfs in their stack almost every six stack is gonna have at least one smurf most of the time they're gonna have more and if you stack with four five six people you can go up against these giant stacks and you're gonna ensure that you want into smurfs more often now, the second thing is I would suggest just duoing and try to find someone that takes the game incredibly serious, but at the same time doesn't tilt. A good duo partner can be the difference between keeping you in check from tilt and allowing you to play and improve much quicker. Now, the next thing would be to work off each other. Make sure that you are fixing his weakness and you're trying to help each other in proactive ways. Imagine that your ally is someone like a McCree. Playing a character that specifically works with a McCree, someone like Ryan, makes a lot of sense. But if your ally is a McCree and you're playing ball as a ball one trick, these characters don't really work well together. So think about how your characters at least work well together you can affect the composition of the whole team but at least you two can work well together and then of course the last bit of that is try to pick characters that can combo with each other ultimates in particular are very powerful combos like nano blade grab dragon or even other combos like far mercy or ash mercy these are things that you should definitely strive for in the perfect duo partner now the next thing the sixth tip it's a pretty brief one but it's important always warm up do do not come home from a hard day at school or work and jump right into comp. You're going to be throwing like the first three games while you start to play well and you're not going to be playing mechanically well at all in those games. First shoot against bots, then go into the training room, then play some free for all or gun game, whatever is your preference. Then after all those things, maybe it would only take like 20 or 30 minutes, then go into a comp game. That little bit of time just practicing your mechanics before you go into a comp game will break off the rust, warm you up and make Make it so that you're already playing fairly well before you even jump into a game. Now, the seventh thing I have for you in order to climb all the way from bronze straight to diamond is smash that like button. That's right. If you smash it right now, you'll instantly get to the diamond rank. No, all joking aside, think smarter, not harder. Countering the enemy in Overwatch is a route to easy kills. If you are getting outplayed or even farmed, playing a character that can work on a different axis can ensure the win. Let's say you're playing Zen and you're getting farmed versus a Doomfist. Sure, maybe a god tier Zen could kill that Doomfist and outplay them, but why not just try a Brig or Mora instead? Maybe a Widow is constantly killing your DPS and losing the duel? Don't even let that Widow take a duel with your DPS. Play Hammond and jump on top of her shutter down. Maybe a Sombra keeps hacking you when you're playing Doomfist. 
You could swap the soldier, cancel the hack, and pressure her so that she doesn't get any value at all. While it definitely does help you to improve your skills on a hero so that you can overcome bad matchups, as far as achieving the win in the moment, there is no point in making it more difficult on yourself or even putting yourself up at a disadvantage against the enemy, so think smarter, not harder. Now moving on to the 8th tip that we have for you, it's focus on a role. This is called specialization, and I repeat this a lot, but this is probably the number one mistake against players that can't make it past the gold rank. You need to try to maximize your practice time on a select number of heroes. Stop trying to play everything and be this flex god. Here's the hard truth for you. If you play everything, but you play everything bad, then your flexing doesn't matter. The only way that you're actually flexible is if you play the characters that you're flexing to actually well and accomplish what those characters want to do and accomplish what those characters are good at. Now, I'm not saying that you can't be a flex god, but just make sure that your baseline is filled out before then and that you get incredibly competent at all the heroes that you want to master first and really focus your time on a select number of them. On top of this, if you spent two hours playing tank, two hours playing support, and two hours playing DPS, I can guarantee you, you would improve at nearly three times the rate if instead you only played one of the roles. Especially if you don't have infinite amounts of time in the universe to play Overwatch, pick the role that you want to master and try to max out your hours in there so that you can improve at the fastest rate. Now the ninth thing that you need to do in order to improve straight to the diamond rank, it's learn from your errors. This is something that's really important. This is the next level way in order to make sure that you iron out all your mistakes. What you need to keep in mind is that the only acceptable deaths, quote unquote, are to either ultimates or wiping with your team slash resetting. If you died in a way besides these two scenarios, then you need to make note of how you died. Was it because of poor positioning? Well, did the enemies just creep up on you and kill you that way? Was your game sense off? Did you try to force through an interaction that didn't work? Or maybe you forced through a game plan that got shut down. Maybe you didn't know that the enemy had an old combo in their back pocket and you ran right into it. Or lastly, did you lose a straight up 1v1 and was it because of your mechanics? Mark down exactly why you're dying each and every time and then make a game plan of how to improve it. If your mechanics are bad, do everything you can to improve your mechanics. I've made a video very recently about it, so you could do that. Is your game sense bad? Maybe you need to learn more about the game. Watch more guides, apply your knowledge, watch streamers, and write down anything you can learn. Maybe your positioning's bad and you need to adjust it accordingly. No matter what your problem is, you can always be learning from how you're dying and it's very important that you try to adapt from it because that's the way that you're going to become a better player. Now the 10th and final thing that you need to do if you want to get straight to diamond, and this might be the most important thing, it's called the pro mindset and you need to adopt it. Tilting in your games is only going to make you play worse and it's going to completely mess up your win rate. If you're going to tilt like crazy, go ahead and take a break. Also, you need to realize that some games are going to be completely out of your control. You got to remember, even Defran, God's gift to gaming, lost games in plat. If you lose a game, no matter what you do, you need to understand that that's just the way the game is and to just go again. No matter how good of a player you are, you're not going to be able to carry 100% of games. It's all about just winning the games that are close, that you're the difference maker, to push your little bit of 50-55% win rate to the 60-65 percentile. If you're only grinding the game a little bit though, it will be hard to see results. And just like working out, you're not going to see results with your first day at the gym, nor are you going to see results with your first day playing comp. It's a slow, hard grind, but you put in that effort, you go again, and you don't tilt, and you apply all these things above, and I guarantee you, you will get to the diamond rank. Speaking of getting to the diamond rank, GameLeap.com has in-depth guides that can get you straight to the diamond rank and beyond, including advanced concept guides and in-depth character breakdown so do yourself a favor and go check it out if you really want to become next level and make yourself broken anyways that's all we got for you today if you have any questions comments or concerns definitely let me know in the comments down below and if there's any other video ideas that you want to see i would love to know about it so i can get right on it anyways that's all i got for you today i'm coach mills and of course until next time